Hi, this is uh, Coach Jeremy from Pneumatica Coaching Services. Uh, I know it's been a while since we posted a video and uh, we would like to, to break the silence with uh, a study on the Lord's Prayer. So you're going to be taking a couple of weeks, um, hopefully the next two or three weeks, um, just to be able to talk about the Lord's Prayer and, and the significance of the Lord's Prayer in our lives. And generally the significance of prayer in our own personal lives. And, and I'd love for us to look through the Lord's Prayer because this is the, the prayer that Jesus taught, the model, the, the schema, the blueprint that he, he gave his disciples and we are his disciples on, on how to approach prayer. And generally, when a lot of us think about prayer, we, we get so complicated with it. We, we, we don't know where to approach it from. We don't know where to start, how to start, how do I even start talking to, to someone that I don't even see? Um, am I talking to myself? We have so many fears and so many worries and so many anxieties within our heart when it comes to the whole issue of prayer. And, and I believe that as we look through the Lord's Prayer, I believe that some of those would be broken down. That's my prayer, is that by the end of this study, that a lot of the myths that we have concerning prayer will be broken down. I, uh, my desire is that at the end of this, a lot of us will have a deeper connection with God when it comes to prayer and communicating with Him. I pray that for a lot of us, by the end of this study, we would be on fire, on fire in, in our prayer lives, in our prayer closets, that a lot of us would have an understanding of who God is and why prayer is so important as we approach Him and as we communicate with Him. And I would also love for us to, to see the nuggets that are found within the Lord's Prayer because there are so many wise nuggets that are found there that can enable us to understand and open our mind more to what we should be praying for, what we should be grateful for, and how we can approach life and how we can approach the Kingdom of God. Because that's the beauty of prayer, because prayer gives us that kind of... of um, pathway into how we can approach life and how we can approach the kingdom of God because prayer both ways it's both horizontal and vertical because we are talking to God about the things that we are experiencing in life and, and such kinds of, of things and we are listening to God about the things that we experience in life so it's a, it's a wonderful and beautiful thing that I would wish and I would desire for each and every one of us to to understand and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking down the sections of the Lord's Prayer and, and, and hopefully we'll be able to do a video for each section. And we'll be using the, the Lord's Prayer from the book of, of Luke chapter 11. Um, one of the key things I would like for us to understand as a foundation for the whole series is that the Lord's Prayer is found in two places in the Bible. We see in the beginning of the ministry, when Jesus begins his ministry, he, he preaches and he talks about prayer in, in the Sermon on the Mount. This is in the book of Matthew, which is what we are all common with. We are common with the prayer found in Matthew. But then at the end of his ministry, when Jesus is approaching the end of his ministry, his disciples come to him again and they ask him, Lord, teach us how to pray the same way that John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. And so Jesus gives the same teaching that he gave at the Sermon on the Mount, but this time it's simpler. If you look at those, if you compare the Lord's Prayer, um, the two teachings that Jesus gave on the Lord's Prayer, the one in Matthew and the one in Luke, you find that the one in Luke has less words, is, is a bit more straightforward and is a bit more easy to go with, a bit more flowy. I don't know how... I, or maybe it's because for a lot of us we are used to the Lord's Prayer and, and rushing through it. I know there are videos that we can even sh of people just saying their own things in the Lord's Prayer. And that's what I would love for us to do, to take a step and listen to the words. Because that's what prayer is about. It's about listening to the words. We're not just praying for the sake of praying. We're not just going before God and blabbering for the sake of blabbering so that we can tick a box and say, I prayed today, God bless me. I prayed today, God sought this issue out. No, it's about, let's, can we communicate? We are communicating with Him. Listening to the words that we are speaking to Him and listening to the words that He speaks to us. Because that's what communication is about. It's about listening. 
listening to what we are saying and listening to what the other person is saying. And I think a lot of us, like we would say in, in, in arguments and in, in such scenarios, is that a lot of us fall prey into arguments because we don't listen. We don't listen to what they are saying and we don't listen to what we are saying. We just say anything. And, and that's what I would love for us to, to listen to the words that we speak to God. And listen to the words that God, that Jesus himself, God himself gave us in regards to prayer. And, and, and one of the key things as we finish up this short video that I would love for us to also understand is that um, prayer is supposed to get simpler as we mature in Christ. And I think that the, the opposite or the yeah, transverse is true for, for what we, we hear or we see in the world, that people say the more complex your prayer is, the more mature you're growing in Christ. And so we try to fill our prayers up with such complexities and so many words and so many verses and so many things. We're just filling it up with so many things because we think that's what will make prayer work. The more complex, the more I, 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 I speak about the angels and call the devil by his name and the demons by their names and what they're doing. And the, we try and complex it with so many things, fill it up with so many things. But, but that's not, I believe that's not how God intends it to be. And that's not the same thing we see in relationships. Because what happens in relationships is that the closer we grow to each other, the more simply becomes to communicate with each other that we even get to a point whereby it's almost as if we can communicate without words and I'll just give you a look and you'll be like ah, I know what you're saying I know what you're saying just a smile just a, a nod and you know what the person is trying to communicate so I believe that prayer is supposed to get simpler and simpler as we grow closer and closer to God. And that is my desire that at the end of this whole series, we will declutter and discluster our whole issues and things to do with prayer and we will come to a point of simplicity where we just understand and want to communicate our heart with God and we want to hear His heart. That that will be what is left. Removing all these other things, we will only be left with one key thing, us sharing and speaking our hearts to God and us being ready to listen and hear and heed the heart of God. So Father, I pray for each and every one of us that as we begin this series, Lord, you would be with us all the way to the end and that you will also be with each and every one of us, Lord, to ignite the places of, of prayer, Lord, ignite the secret place, O oh God. Father, we pray that you, you would declutter, you would help us declutter these whole issues and the whole complexities we have with prayer, Lord. And we would come with simplicity before you, Lord, with hearts that are open, Lord, with hearts that are broken and just open before you, Lord, with an eagerness and a willingness to listen to your heart, O oh God. So, Father, may you cover us. May you be with us. May you bless us. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. So be blessed. The Lord be with you. The Lord keep you. The Lord watch over you. Amen.